Okay, I'm installing this bearing, this small bearing, the new one, in the uh, rear differential housing here, and it started to go in uh, okay just by tapping it, and then it got a little bit uh, cocked in the in the housing there, so it's uh, not going any further, and I don't want to bang on it too hard and damage the bearing. So I've uh, don't have a press, so um, came up with just basically using the idea I used to get this one out backwards uh, threaded rod washer stick that through there like that and then uh, simply a matter of another large nut on the back side and washer and nut and uh, put that together and tighten that and that'll draw that bearing right in all right now I'm putting this large bearing onto the uh, pinion gear assembly um, I'm using my large vise and a uh, plumbing fitting. The OD of the plumbing fitting fits perfectly on the inner part of the bearing, so I can push on that. And as I close the vise, it slides it right onto the pinion gear, presses it right on. Okay, now that bearing is installed on the pinion gear assembly. Now I'm going to install this bearing in this side of the rear differential housing goes right down in here okay just finished installing this outboard seal the new one in the uh, this half of the uh, differential the rear diff and uh, that just pushes in uh, pretty easily I use a, a dead blow mallet and just lightly tapped around the perimeter to get that in and uh, so that's all set and I'd already installed this bearing by pressing in from this side. Okay, now that I have this bearing, new bearing installed, and new seal installed, and the pinion gear bearing installed, and this bearing installed, and the pinion gear assembly, I could start doing a little reassembly. Uh, for starters, these two shims go in first on the pinion gear pinion gear and bearing assembly slides right in here pretty easy with two hands free but and then there are a couple of shims that go on here before this is inserted into here. So I'll do that next. Okay, these three shims here, these small ones, they go in here first, but uh, rather than trying to keep them steady and align it, easiest way to put these on is to slide them onto the shaft. There's two stuck together here, so it's three total. Slide them on. Then I'm gonna invert this uh, housing onto here and slide it through. Once that's installed, now there's two shims go back on here. And now I can install the cover. Here's the uh, rear differential cover assembly. I uh, cleaned this up to get ready for installing the new seal and pushing the bearing in on this side. But before I do that, I'm going to uh, just run the wire wheel over this uh, this gasket surface over here, so that it's uh, clean for when I put the axle housing back on. And here's what it looks like after a quick cleanup. So now I'm going to insert the seal into the rear of this unit, which is uh, this seal here, this large one, which goes with this uh, rear of the seal facing towards the inside of the differential and this gets pressed fit right into there. To seat this seal I just uh, get it started and then I've got a, a two inch schedule 40 PVC pipe cap and that will fit right over that so that I can tap this in without uh, damaging this lip. So that's how I'm going to get that in. Now with the seal fully seated I can now install the large bearing. 
Okay, I get this large bearing started by tapping it in, making sure it's not cocked in the uh, in the hole, and then end up uh, just putting it in the vise here. I put in a piece of flat metal stock, just this just a piece of scrap metal that I had. I use that so that I don't mar the bearing or put direct pressure on one part of the bearing, and uh, sandwich that in there with the uh, housing cover and a block of wood in the back side to keep this soft aluminum from getting marred by the jaws of the vise. And now I just crank down on the vise and press that bearing right in. Okay, I removed this large gear again because uh, it didn't seem to be um, meshing with this gear properly. Something just didn't feel right. And then I realized that uh, I had mixed the shim sets up. The, uh, there are three thin shims here on the workbench that I had in there that actually are part of the front differential assembly shim set. I went back and checked the video that I had made and confirmed it that the set that's supposed to go in here is actually these three shims, which are pretty much identical to the ones I just showed you, but that also were paired with this spacer. So the uh, shims and the spacer go in there. So I'm going to put those on now. Um, same method as before. I'm going to slide them onto the shaft of the large gear here. and. Uh, then feed it through. Now I'm ready to install this rear differential cover. Um, it's got a new O-ring and I put a little bit of light lubricant on the O-ring and also on the seal lips so that as I'm uh, getting this cover into place the O-ring will not bind and possibly uh, get pinched in the uh, in the assembly and cause a leak. So I'm going to install that now. All right. Goes on pretty easy if you lube the uh, O-ring and the sealed up, like I said. Just gonna work it on there slowly and then uh, tap it with a soft. I'm using a rubber mallet here around the perimeter until it gets fully seated. And now all I have to do now is install the screws and torque them down. Okay, uh, I just hand tighten these 12 millimeter bolts, and I'm not gonna torque them down right now because I'm actually gonna have to replace two of them. These are the two that, when I was disassembling them, I, they were so ground up I had to use vice grips on them because they were actually the two on the bottom here and at some point uh, probably ground up against some rocks or something while driving out in the woods or going through mud, who knows, kind of really ruined these. So I'm going to get two more to replace them uh, and I'll end up putting them here and here and then I'll torque it all down. So now I'm going to install the bearing stop, which has a new O-ring installed. But before I can put this in, I have to install the seal that goes inside. And that's this seal. That's this seal right here, which actually makes a seal on this adapter. Installing this seal and the bearing stopper is a little bit tricky. It has to be pressed in from this side and uh, you're pressing on the back of the seal. So the uh, best way to do this without completely distorting the seal is to find something, a cylinder that will actually fit down in this hole, in this groove. And what I found was that my old housing that I had uh, not thrown out is a uh, perfect fit. It actually fits right down over the inner part of the seal and uh, allows me to uh, push on that seal fairly evenly. And then uh, what I did was I mounted that here in the vise and then tightened on the vise and that pushed the seal right down in. And you can see it's uh, almost completely seat it's seated completely on that side and it's just a little bit up on that side so I'll just uh, give it one more light press in the vise here and that should suffice. Now with the seal fully seated and installed I'm going to install the bearing stop. Um, I'm going to put a light film of oil on this o-ring so that as I uh, engage the bearing stop the o-ring will uh, slide inside and seat properly as opposed to getting bound up and possibly getting ripped out of the groove causing a leak. 
Getting this bearing stop to go in without damaging the new O-ring is tricky, to say the least. I noticed that when I was taking the bearing stop out, after I initially broke it free from being frozen, it started to unscrew, and then near the end, it got stuck again, and I had to force it. And what I had found was that as the O-ring passes the hole that this little locking screw screws into, the O-ring has a tendency to want to try and double back and go up into that hole and get stuck. And then as you continue to force it past, it'll rip or tear the O-ring. Well, twice now I've tried installing it. First I put a little bit of lubricant on there and didn't want to go, it got stuck. Then I put a liberal coating of oil on it and I still had the same problem. And when inspecting with a flashlight shining down the hole, I could actually see the O-ring doubling up and trying to come up to this through this hole. So what I'm going to do to uh, solve this issue is I've actually installed this screw and I've tightened it just enough so that the very tip of the little um, pin on the end of the screw there that engages the bearing stopper is hopefully going to fill that hole enough and be, uh, eliminate the void that the o-ring is trying to get up into and hopefully this will work well that didn't work that idea didn't work and now uh, it's stuck in there again and I'm trying to back it out and it's really wedged in there and I can see down in the hole you can't see it on this video but down in the hole I can see the o-ring is back back up in the hole and doubled over itself so um, now that o-ring is going to be trashed so I'm just going to force this out, get the o-ring out that I trashed, and uh, get a replacement o-ring. Next time I get that o-ring, I'll get a couple of them. And uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, find a uh, bolt that I can insert in that hole so that uh, instead of just little this little tiny pin pushing on the o-ring, I'll have a, a whole bolt filling that hole so that as it turns, hopefully the O-ring will have no place to go but in. And I'll also make sure I have a brand new O-ring in there that's lubed up really well. But for now, I'm gonna just take this out, trash the O-ring that's in there that I destroyed, and I'll probably go to work on the front differential until I get a new O-ring. Well, I just finished getting the bearing stop out, and boy, was that a disaster. Uh, all because of that O-ring getting pinched in there. It had just, bound itself in there so badly and gotten its way worked its way out of the groove and uh, so I mean I had to put a tremendous amount of leverage on here to get this back out uh, I think I actually had more leverage on there than when I initially was breaking the frozen part loose for the first time uh, so I definitely have to come up with a better way of getting this to work this is what's left of the o-ring when I finally did get it out it just you can see it's it's shredded it really got uh, trashed in the process of getting stuck in there. And uh, so I'm going to clean this all up again and get a new O-ring. And like I uh, said earlier, I'm probably going to try and find a, a metric bolt that will fit in there and plug that hole. And hopefully that will correct the issue that I'm having with this um, O-ring falling into that, backing up into that hole and getting jammed in there so badly. All right, returning to the problem of installing this bearing stop with the O-ring that kept getting stuck and ruined. Got a brand new O-ring on there. And this time, picked up metric bolt. That's going to thread into here. And once I thread that in, I'm going to thread it in so that the bottom edge of the bolt here is flush with the bottom of this hole and then hopefully I'll put a little uh, grease on this o-ring to lube it up and then hopefully as I screw it in the bolt in the hole will stop that o-ring from backing up in there and allow the o-ring to pass that hole without getting stuck so we'll give it a shot okay here's a view with the bolt inserted you can see I've inserted it and it uh, pretty much fills that hole really well and uh, I've also Put a little bit of white lithium grease on the o-ring just to uh, help it along as it uh, gets past that point so now we'll try and install it 
And success. What a difference that made. So uh, if I ever have a sim similar situation, uh, hopefully I'll remember this trick because that really did a uh, really did a good job. The uh, bearing stop screwed right in there, no problem. Use my little uh, my homemade jig here and uh, put a pipe wrench on there and tightened it up and uh, could feel it. it. It didn't bind at all and then uh, could feel it bottom out on the actual bearing itself and then snugged it up to a point where now I can take out my temporary bolt, the 10 millimeter bolt that uh, was in here and replace it with the little uh, special bolt which acts as a uh, locking pin so that this bolt comes out and this is going to go in there and of course that little protrusion is going to engage these teeth right here and keep this from accidentally working loose and then before I put that in I'm going to replace this little rubber gasket I ordered a new one uh, from Arctic Cat and I'm going to put a new one on there so that I don't have a leak at that point <laughs> here's an example of uh, where I wish I had just gone and gotten a, uh, a generic flat rubber washer this is the original one that came off of that little pin I was just showing you this is the new one this is the actual OEM part the uh, Arctic Cat part number is uh, 300-3290 and that cost me a dollar fifty nine for that little sucker and uh, quite frankly it doesn't even look as good as the one that was on there so I'm wondering if the one that was on there was a aftermarket one or who knows maybe back then when they sourced them if this is the original maybe the original OEM manufacturer provided something different but anyways I'm going to install the new one okay now this uh, adapter gets mounted on there a large washer and a nut Now I just want to mention about this nut. This isn't an ordinary nut. It's a special nut. It's got a very thin wall at the edge here. And what happens is after this nut is installed at the factory um, and torqued down, they peen over the end wall of this nut and cave it into this keyed area on the end of the spline shaft, uh, the uh, threaded shaft here. And that has the effect of locking this nut into position so it can't loosen. And um, you can see now that I've tightened it up as tight as I can get it uh, with just a regular wrench. It's pretty close to where it was originally. And uh, I'm going to just torque it down a little bit further and then I'm going to peen it right there again to lock it in. Okay, so now that's all set. I've peen that over and next step is I'm going to install these two new metric studs that I picked up at the hardware store to replace the two that I had uh, removed early on to give me more access when I was working on the problem of getting this off. Okay, the two new studs are slightly longer, um, but that's okay because the uh, housing will still slip on and uh, basically nuts will go on there and hold it on no problem. But you can see they are just a little bit, a tiny bit longer. And also, the other concern was this little area here on the stud that is not threaded but that's actually going to be completely covered by the thickness of the housing here so not going to make a difference at all all right well, I guess tonight I'm going to quit and go out with a little Jerry Lee Lewis and uh, I'm going to take the housing I got off of eBay the used one and I'm going to let that soak in some parts cleaner and get all that uh, old grease and everything out of there before I start uh, working on the next phase of this, which is gonna be uh, getting this uh, shaft and bearing properly mounted in here. All right, 